Reclaiming Youth at Risk was an attempt to show the world some of the wisdom that comes out of Aboriginal culture and life. Uh, and in particular, how it is that Aboriginal people raise strong children. See, we know that, you're, that your mind has to be educated if you're going to live well in Canadian society. It's a complex society. It's a complex culture. And you really need to have an education to live well in this society. If you don't have grade 12, the quality of your life is going to be diminished. If you don't have that education, not only your own life, but the lives of your children and your grandchildren are negatively impacted if, if a person leaves school before completing grade 12. So you have to have an educated mind. But what our ancestors were particularly skilled at was teaching a person's heart. Now, we don't even have a good word for that. Some societies have talked about the cultures. Some societies have talked about the virtues. At UBC, we always use the term formation to talk about the learning that can occur on the inside of a person, the learning that can occur in the human heart because it doesn't work the same way as learning in the mind. I can teach somebody's mind by just talking to them. That's enough to get an idea in a person's head. But I get something into your heart only if I give you certain experiences. See, we know from about a century of research that there are four kinds of experiences that create a strong human being. Number one, if you know that you are significant. Let's see, I see you every day and I say to you every time I see you, you're very important to me. Well, after 10 years of doing that, I've talked to your mind. So how do I get it down into your heart? By how I treat you. How I treat you will place that learning into your heart. So every human being needs to know these four things. That I am significant, that I am capable, that I'm powerful on the inside, and that I'm a genuinely good human being. My co-authors and I took these four human needs and we looked to see how our ancestors raise children to experience that and we put it around a medicine wheel because our discovery was that our ancestors knew that belonging lets you know how important you are. Mastery is how you experience what you know, what you're capable of. Independence in the sense of being responsible for yourself, that kind of power on the inside is how I will know that I'm a strong human being. And fourthly, if I live a life of generosity, that's how I will know my goodness. And I will need to restore that sense of goodness if I ever go through a crisis of some kind. So let's think briefly about these four. Belonging is probably the most necessary human experience. It's in every child. If I had a mom sitting on the chair here and a baby's crawling on the floor, the baby looks up and sees unfamiliar faces, where's that baby going to go? Crawl right over to mom, right? How do you teach this to a baby? Do you put arrows on the floor? Do you give them learning objectives with pretests? No. It's in them. They come that way. Every baby in the world knows that it's important to belong. Every teenager in the world wants to be with friends. And that's normal for all teenagers. And so we want to think about this theme of belonging as a strategy. First of all, it's a philosophy. It's a way to look at the world. Everything belongs somewhere. Every human being should belong to someone. We should train ourselves to respond with belonging and write it into every policy that we have. Belonging should be a theme. Lots of schools imagine they are very belonging places, but when a teenager is in crisis, how do they respond? Unbelonging. But they don't call it unbelonging. They give it other kinds of names like time out, they will say. Zero tolerance, uh, they will say. Out of school suspension, it's the wrong response. What you want to do when a person is in crisis is surround them with special connections. We want to train ourselves to respond with belonging. Uh, that has to become a part of our philosophy. We have to find technique ways that we can embody this because we want people to learn this by experience if they're going to be strong. See, the circle of courage philosophy is how you turn someone's intergenerational trauma in a positive direction. You change a person's biological legacy in a positive direction if you provide lots of belonging experiences and experiences of mastery. It's in every human being to want to succeed. The parent of a three-year-old will tell you every argument you have with a three-year-old is whether or not you're going to let her do it herself. The parent of a 16-year-old will tell you every dispute you have with that 16-year-old is whether or not you're going to let him do it himself. And when you come to visit me when I'm living in the nursing home, listen to what I say to the staff because pretty often it's going to be, let me do it myself. Every human being has a desire to succeed. 
yet we can break it. Mastery isn't getting something done. Mastery is discovering what you can do because that's naturally in every single human being. So if we want people to have these qualities down the left column, uh, we have to make sure that they discover what they can do. It has to become a philosophy, but it also has to be a source of techniques as well. Independence we're using in the sense of responsibility, being responsible for yourself. And the best strategy that adults have here is using discipline appropriately. My task is to teach my children how they don't need me, how to be so empowered that they don't need me any longer. And that's what discipline does. If as a parent, I take the role of being a coach and a cheerleader, that's the perfect kind of parenting that we can give. Real discipline gives you a person who makes a decision because it's right, not because anybody's watching. And they're very different kinds of dynamics. Our real job as adults is to empower young people so they don't need us anymore. If you look back at the traditional ways of your people, you will discover that gradually and appropriately we empowered our young people until they became people who contributed to our communities and who took their rightful role as adults and did all the right kinds of things. Uh, our system was not a system of control. It was a system of empowerment. Uh, and that's, that's typical of Aboriginal childcare. If we want people to have the qualities down the left column, we have to give them opportunities for generosity. This is why on the coast, people have a tradition of potlatch. We use them to mark any turning point in our life. And our custom is we invite everybody we know, we feed them, and enough food isn't enough. There has to be too much food. There has to be so much food that everyone carries some home. That's when you have enough food. And then we deliberately accumulate all the goods we can so we can give them away. So everyone takes something home as a memento of this event, and we'll remember this event. They were witnesses to this event then. You're supposed to give away until you don't have anything left. And actually, it's only when you get to that point that you can turn your life in a positive direction. Real generosity hurts. Real generosity has to cost. My point in this circle of courage is to say this is a resiliency code. If you want to be a strong human being, you have to have these four kinds of experiences over and over again. See, we can't guarantee that your life is going to be free of problems because nobody's life is free of problems. Everybody has problems. But if you have resiliency, which is what you get out of these experiences, the resilient people, when life knocks them down, get up one more time. And if you look into the face of a child, you will see in the heart of that child everything that we can be. And we can become that if we use these themes of belonging and mastery and independence and generosity. Thank you for inviting me.